The morning after, the movies. But I hope you leave enough room for my fist because I'm going to ram it into your stomach and break your goddamn spine! Ah! Uncensored, spoiler-filled movie reviews and fun only available at xrock.com. I'm gonna scissor kick you in the back of the head. Movie time. Hey, buddy, ever heard of a line? Hey, have you ever been dragged to the sidewalk and being until you... Pissed! Blood! Starts now. I'm gonna take you to the bank, Senator Trent. To the blood bank. Welcome to Morning After the Movies, Episode 3. This one is Pacific Rim. We always thought alien life would come from the stars. But it came from deep beneath the Pacific. It is uh, Nick, Big J, and Randy hanging out in the uh, Exa studio, ready to talk about uh, one of the biggest movies of the year, blockbuster-wise, and that is Pacific Rim. And Jay, you and I uh, did something relatively dumb. We we stayed yeah. up really late and, and went to go see this movie on Thursday night before anybody else could have a chance to see it. But A, that was awesome. B, it was really dumb because we have to work early in the morning. Yeah, yes. Yeah. So we left a little tired. But, uh, you know, it's probably one of the few movies that, that might have been worth it just in the scale of how, you know, big of a blockbuster it is. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, thank you to Gateway 12 Cinemas, uh, the Regal there, for uh, having us in and uh, letting us uh, see a movie late at night on Thursday night. And let's uh, let's go around the room and, and, and talk a little bit about uh, Pacific Rim. Big J, your thoughts initially on the film. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's so fun because, uh, I, you know, watching the movie, I just felt like a kid. In order to fight monsters, we created monsters of our own. Back when you're a kid and you're watching a movie, um, it's, you know, you, you get to kind of, uh, in your mind... Uh, pretend. I mean, it's it's a real part of the whole escape thing. And so uh, I was in that whole thing. I was totally drawn into the story in the movie and, uh, you know, forgetting about uh, all the silliness that that, that the whole idea of, uh, you know, big monsters coming from uh, alien monsters coming from another world. So I had so much fun with it. I just thought that the scale of it was so big. It was something that you could just easily get into. And I'm not the biggest science fiction fantasy kind of world person. And so um, I was surprised at how much I was liking it, and the, another part of the the whole thing for me was just uh, that that the the people well Guillermo just did such a fantastic job of of telling the story of it when a lot of directors I think could have gotten bogged down in the details uh, like uh, how the drift works and uh, a lot of those kind of things that that drag a movie down like that it was it was pretty much nonstop action once you got the whole narration out of the way and figured out okay here's how we got here and now what we're we gonna do about it all right Randy you did not go with us because you can't handle 3d right. so you went to another movie and another showing but you did see the movie right I did all right it's not in 3d um Kind of the opposite. I'm not a huge science fiction fan. Uh, I liked it. I didn't love it. Um, also kind of the opposite. I thought it was lacking some details that I kind of wanted to know more things that weren't really there. But you kind of figure out some stuff throughout the movie, so I guess it was enough to piece it together. Um, but overall, I mean, yeah, I like it. But I was not like – I didn't have a – You can say I, you I, don't I, like I, it. I, it's no, okay. No, I like it. I didn't have like a giant, you know, hard on over it, but I, you know, I liked it. <laughs> like, shake his head. All right, but uh, on on the other end of the spectrum, I, I I don't know what I wanted coming into the movie. I knew I had an idea that I was really going to enjoy it because I like Guillermo del Toro. I want to like everything he does. So I will admit to being a little bit biased heading into this thing, just because I am such a fan of his other work. But um. I, I liked it, man. I had fun. You know what I mean? It, it's just, I knew I was going into a monster movie. And so my expectations were there. I realized that I, I wasn't going to get a whole lot of ridiculous answers. I didn't think there was going to be a whole lot of science stuff going on. I just wanted to have fun and see huge robots beat the piss out of aliens. Today we are canceling the apocalypse! And that's what it was, man. I mean, it was people beating the crap out of each other and getting the crap kicked out of them. And I don't know what I can, more I could ask for from the, the trailer aspect of things. That's kind of, I got what I wanted. So I was I walked away pretty happy with the movie, I think. And on the other end of this thing, I'm not like, you know, the people that are truly honestly geeked up for this movie are the guys that are into the anime and the mecha stuff and the Japanimation. And, and, and I'm not into that kind of stuff. So I, I can't pick it apart from that angle of things. All I can say is... I'm a big Voltron guy. 
And when they whipped, when they <laughs> right. whipped out the sword, I was like, "This is this is as close as I'm ever going to get to a Voltron movie." So that was really really cool. So there was a little bit of the kid in me that really enjoyed that kind of aspect of things. But you know, it, it's it's a movie that that I thought you know detail wise, as far as the CGI and that kind of stuff goes, and the action. I mean, it was it was pretty damn amazing that they put this together in the scale that they did. To pilots, our minds, our memories, connect them. And man and machine become one. Throughout the week, we had a chance to talk to a couple of the cast members of uh, the movie Pacific Rim, and uh, our, our friend uh, Robert uh, Mallet. He uh, he, of course, was one of the uh, one of the guys controlling one of the robots, uh, one of the Jaegers, as they're called. And uh, you know, he gave us a good insight just how big it is. Everything was big. Everything was huge. You know, the, uh, the sets were were amazing. Of course, you know they, they used a lot of practical sets. You know, obviously, they didn't create those, uh, you know, those cages, those monsters, and those huge robots that are like 25 stories high. And of course, they couldn't create those. <laughs> so you get the sense of how big it was when you're when you're on it, you know. And uh, it, and it was all into uh, detail. Like uh, Guillermo del Toro is, he's into details about how the how the way it looks. So for him, it makes the world look more more. You know, it looks the, the, makes the world real for him. You know, so it's uh, so it, it, was, it was amazing. You know, you, you really get the sense of the characters of the story when you when you were part of those. So it's pretty cool. It is pretty cool. <laughs> So let's go around the room and, and get, talk about how many sticks of butter we're going to give uh, Pacific Rim. Big J, you really liked it. What are you talking about here? Uh, you know, I think I'm going to give it. Uh, I'm going to give it uh, the Paula Deen treatment, and I'm going to give it five sticks of butter. A perfect movie for me. It was. Wow. I mean, I I just uh, I thought that it was it was fa- it, like it brought out the kid in me. There you go, Randy. Your thoughts? Um, I'm going to give it a solid three. Okay, right there in the middle. You All didn't right. like it though. No, I said, I said I liked it. I didn't love it. Oh, okay. big, there's a big difference between those. Your enthusiasm for your I liked it was less than and yeah, I'm and I'm gonna give it I'm gonna give it four sticks of butter for uh for Pacific Rim so I'm gonna I, I I don't know it's tough for me because I gave Man of Steel four sticks of butter and I end up walking away pretty happy with both on the same level as far as what I was concerned with so I'm gonna stick with my four out of five sticks of butter for Pacific Rim but without a doubt I think that this is a movie that you need to see on the biggest screen yeah. you could possibly see it in with the best sound system and then you will end up walking away going holy crap what did I just see so I, I gotta ask, since I wasn't there, how did it look in 3D? Well, it's hard to say because we haven't seen the other side. But of it. I mean, just I will say this: I, I, I recommend checking it out not in 3D first, and then in a second viewing going in 3D because I do feel like the the coolness of a, a lot of those fight scenes were were intense and fast moving and very close up, and also in the dark and in the rain. And that doesn't lend itself very good to 3D kind of transference. So I would love to see what it would look like on a regular screen, just a big and huge and not in the 3D side of things. Because I think we did miss some of the detail, maybe, uh, in some of those fight scenes just because it was so dark in some places. Yeah, I would like to see. Um, I, and here's the thing is, is I would like to see these movies in IMAX, but yeah. minus the 3D. Right. I mean, this that's what I would love to see this movie in. And, and it's one of those things you really do have to experience it uh, on the big screen because unless you have like a $18,000 home system. <laughs> right. We're going to get into the spoilers aspect of things and get into some specific details about the movie. Uh, big J, you're big on acting and character development sometimes in movies regardless. How did you feel about the actors in the film and how when the job they did? I thought they were great, especially Charlie Day. Yeah. He was he was definitely the comic relief, and, and, and you need that in a movie. And, you know, his part was really pivotal to telling how the end of the story is going to happen and, and trying to figure out how to shut down that gateway between the two worlds. They just, everybody did a great job. So I thought the acting was spot on, especially with uh, the main character losing his, his brother right off the bat. And, and it just, you know, that, that coming around story. I thought was uh, was told really well, and, and those guys, uh, you know, amped up the the intensity of it. And uh, Ron Perlman was fun. 
I love Ron Perlman. I mean, he's man. perfect, and him and Guillermo are like best buddies. So uh, it was great. I didn't know that there was a thing after the movie. You must have. I, I knew that you were waiting. It's, late. it's like twelve thirty. <laughs> I know you wanted to get out of there. I was like, "What's going on?" But I knew, <laughs> I knew that there was something uh, before. Hey, or this over here. Oh, you, it. You, it. you left. Yeah. Uh, uh, there's something right. You know, after they start well, showing all those things, we can tell oh, what yeah. happened. Well, Ron, Ron Perlman cuts his way out of the the belly and asks where the hell his shoe is. Oh, yeah, where the hell is shoe? It was cool. It was really, it was really cool. So. Randy, you being uh, the critical, uh, the most critical of all of us, what were your big problems with the movie? Yeah, what were the details that you wanted to see, find out about? Not, a, I mean, a lot of it was, uh, to me, some of that stuff was predictable. Like the the marshal coming out to to fight, you saw that coming. Uh, you knew the two, you know, main characters were going to end up hooking up at the end. You saw that coming. Um, There's a lot of things, you know, along the way that. The only thing that surprised me that was like, whoa, was the time that Perlman got eaten by the little baby monster. I, I wonder if the people that come in there that are just going to hate this movie if they have some weird expectations of it. I mean, you, you got to remember that this is this is an homage, a, a kind of a tribute to the Godzilla movies, the guy in a suit, rubber man kind of stomping Tokyo movies. And it's not, you know, kind of like an Independence Day disaster flick or a, a Star Trek sci-fi flick. It's supposed to be a monster movie in the and, vein of, like, Cloverfield. And I think it's way better than Cloverfield, in my opinion. Yeah, different movies, but, you know, I, I you know, I, I think uh, for the most part, there were actually some moments that reminded me of Cloverfield, for sure, um, in, in the movie. But it sure sets the bar high for Godzilla. Which yeah. comes out next year. So Absolutely. There's a lot of pressure now on, I think, on on them to uh, to produce something that is going to be able to, you know, uh, thwart this as is that kind of a movie. So there you go. Go check out Pacific Rim. We say it's uh, it's worth checking out. You may like it in varying different degrees of how much you're you're into it, but it is definitely a movie to go check out. Morning after the movie podcast number three wrapping up. We'll be back soon with number four. This has been the morning after the movies brought to you by 2C Video Productions.